Oh man, it feels great to be back. I love Nashville. Um, I've been here a couple times, came here with the missus once, and then I uh, came for a bachelor party once. And uh, it's a cool city right after my last fight. Um, right away I asked them, I'm like, yo, what, what cities do we got coming up? I want to get right back in here. And uh, they mentioned Nashville. And I was like, all right, let's, let's try to get on that one. And, you know, they had a matchup right away for me. So it's a really good, uh, good fight week so far. And I love being here. Awesome, brother. Now, you're a guy, you kind of took your last loss with some stride. I mean, you'd made some jokes and you're like, you know, man, I, I shouldn't do this, you know, type thing. A tough loss, right? A tough loss, a loss you're not expecting. But um, what have you learned since that fight with Barboza? Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it wasn't my first loss. I've lost before. It was the first time I've been finished in the UFC. And uh, I just, I just kind of think of like what happened in the fight. I didn't feel like I was like uncomfortable. I didn't think I was like starstruck. I wasn't like, Oh man, that's Edson Barbosa. Um, and it was just one of those things that my game plan was going exactly how I wanted it to. I wanted to push him up against the cage. I wanted to wear him down a little bit and, you know, drag him into those deep waters. And next thing you know, the fight's over and it's like, Oh my God. So I feel like I have a lot of unfinished business going into this fight. I feel like I didn't really get to do exactly what I wanted to do because the fight got ended so soon. Um, and I feel like I have a lot of a lot of things people didn't get a chance to see because the fight was so short. So I, th I feel like I'm bringing a lot from that training camp and this next training camp into this fight. Can you detail what we didn't get to see or is that going to be a surprise? <laughs> You're going to have to wait till Saturday, my man. All right. And what, what do you think about Damon Jackson? Because obviously he was a guy that was on a win streak as well. I mean, until his last fight against Dan Ige, but super tough guy. I mean, he's always in good fights. Like what's the, what's the main strategy going into this one? Yeah. Um, I got a lot of respect for Damon Jackson. I think he was, uh, you know, he was kind of one of those guys that have already always been hanging around the top 15. We both just lost to top 15 guys. So we both need this one back. I know he's going to be super hungry. Um, he's a father just like me. Um, I think he's more of a specialist in the terms of he wants to grapple. He wants to kind of make it boring, kind of, you know, ride out, uh, you know, look for a submission, try to get on top and, and, and do some damage. Um, so I think, you know, obviously the game plan is to keep the fight on the feet or look for my own takedowns. He does give up takedowns a lot. Um, and just wear him out, like do what I do, use my conditioning, use my pace, use my high output, uh, and just put it on him, you know, squid him up and uh, get a huge finish and hopefully a performance bonus. Sweet. What's up, man? How we doing? Good, bro. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Um, so I know you put out on Twitter you're looking for the most Nashville song possible for your walkout. Did you get some good input from the fans? Yeah, we did, and uh, we um, I had uh, I had uh, the performer Jelly Roll and one of his guys comment on it. So I think that's the route that we're going with. And I've been a fan of Jelly Roll for a while. Um, I actually uh, last fight I was uh, I was actually going to come out to one of his songs anyway, and we ended up switching, you know, changing it last minute. Um, so just an actual you know high level artist like that commenting kind of sealed it for us. Does when you have like a, a walkout song in general, do you like really take in that moment when it's this type of situation where you, you're obviously looking for the fans for their input and jelly roll? Do you think it'll be different than maybe previous walkouts? Um, yeah, for my walkout song, I always come up to something different. I know it's people have given me advice like, oh, you got to pick one song and like that's got to be your song. But I, I like coming out to different music, and uh, the reason why is because I feel like each fight you're growing and you're and you're kind of a, I'm a different person each time. Um, this is my 37th fight, counting amateur and pro and boxing and kickboxing and all that um so when i when i knew it was nashville i listened to a lot of country music anyway so i knew i'm like all right you got to pick a country song there's not very many country songs that are good walkout songs because i want the fans to enjoy it you know and, and have a good time and have a good vibe um so there was a few songs i was playing around with i knew it was gonna be something country and uh i won't spoil it but i think we found the right one and i think the fans are really going to respond to it awesome i mean i know you touched on um, you and Damon need this one coming back, back both, both off losses. So when you think about kind of the featherweight division and where you stand right now and kind of how things have been shaping up, what do you think of the division as a whole and kind of the direction at 145? Yeah, I think it's one of the most exciting divisions in the UFC. Um, we were both on the cusp of big things, you know what I mean? He was on a huge winning streak, lost to a top 15 guy in the co-main event. Um, I was coming off a huge win. Lost to, you know, a legend, top 15 co-main event. Um, and now we're getting bumped down to the prelims. You know, we got, we got work to do. That's, that's motivation enough to, to know that 
we got to go in there and, and put on a, a, a real show. And that's what I've always tried to do. Try to have the most exciting style that I can. And um, I think Saturday night it's going to be one of those really high level, you know, fights, especially being on the prelim. I think we're going to try to steal the show. I know you mentioned after the Barboza fight you wanted to jump right back in. Is kind of the same scenario with this one, regardless of how, how it goes on Saturday, you're going to want to get in there one more time this year? I would definitely like to, um, and I know every fighter says this. I don't want to overlook my opponent. Um, I would love to get back in there and, and fight again maybe in December, um, but obviously the most important thing is go out there, handle my business, take Damon Jackson out. Whether I'm leaving in a stretcher, I really don't care as long as my hand gets raised. It really doesn't matter to me. Awesome. Thank you. On an interview earlier this year, you had mentioned that prior to getting to the UFC, you know, your goal was to be in the UFC. Now that you're in it, it's to win fights. Is there any other higher goal at this moment in time? Oh, yeah, I got a bunch of goals. Um, obviously, like top 15, top 10, top 5, you know, world championship, is, is th those, are, those will always be my goals in the UFC. Um, the biggest goal is, you know, making enough money where I'm financially free. I can do my own thing. Um, I saved about, I've saved about... 80 to 85 percent of my UFC money you're not going to see me with like all this crazy jewelry on and stuff like that until I'm at that point where you know I got a, a collection full of assets that are making me money um, so financial freedom is a big one um, having a son now and making sure he has the life that you know I, I believe he deserves and what my family deserves that's obviously a big part of it too now um, that's changed a lot of my perspective having a son where it's like now I want to live in a certain area where he can go to a good school and that kind of stuff and you announced this fight on your OnlyFans page. Can you speak to, like, the, I don't know, the social platform that, you, you know, other fighters could be using that for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I've talked about this a bunch, but it's obviously an athlete page. People are like, oh, you got OnlyFans, ha, ha. Um, But, yeah, it's a, it's a platform. They've sponsored me, and um, I like to use it for a lot of, like, behind-the-scenes stuff, um, almost like a YouTube channel where I'll show, like, basically, like, I just posted the video of my last strength and conditioning session, my last sparring session, um, interviews with my coaches, stuff that I ne wouldn't necessarily post on like my Instagram or Twitter, um, but just gives the fan, like my closest fans, um, just a behind the scenes look, and it's completely free. It's just a different platform that I that I use. And uh, my last question is, you know, Conor McGregor on this new season, of Ultimate Fighter, he's been taking a lot of criticism for his style of coaching. You know, kind of showing up tardy, and you were on obviously Team Faber mm -hmm. on his first stint as a coach. Uh, what's your thoughts on Conor as a coach? Um, yeah, I think, uh, I, I think he looks at it like more of he's the star of the show, but his coaches are the ones really doing his coaching job. You know what I mean? So he's, they're not going to make an ultimate fighter show with Conor McGregor's coaches being, you know, the main, the main characters. Um, so I think they need Conor to, you know, sell, get the views and, and do all that stuff, but I don't think he's necessarily there to, you know, hold, hold pads and, and to do wrestling drills. But he is, I'm sure, very motivational to his team. Just seeing McGregor and, and seeing him roll up in the Lamborghinis and the Ferraris, it's motivation to them. They're, some of them could be a few wins away from getting those opportunities. So I think he's there more for different reasons than actually physically coaching. Um, so I'm sure the guys aren't really too concerned with it.